Hello, hi guys, welcome to the channel. I hope everyone are doing great. I'm also doing good. So in this video, I wanted to explain you one of the production performance related issue that we have faced in my project and how I have fixed that issue and how I have boosted my job performance. Okay, so have you ever read the large CSV file by any chance? Large CSV and chip file by any chance in the spark right so usually whenever you read the large csv file it actually reads are very slow right reads are very slow now in this video i'm gonna explain you and how we have to fix that issue and how how you can tune your job and how you can improve your execution time in this video, I have taken one file which is worth of 10 GB and in CSV and gzip format and I am trying to read that file and we'll see. On the same file, I'll be reading it as a multiple CSV files and I'll try to read it in uh, different formats like parquet, ORC with some snappy compressions. And we'll see how the performance, how the read performance on each case. Okay. So let's go ahead and we'll run the code and we'll see the data. So before jumping into the code, let me show you how the file is look like. So for time being, I'm just keeping the first part like reading the single uh, gzip file and we can continue further and I can show you this at last. Okay. So let me create the Spark session for this and we'll show you the Spark UI. You see the Spark UI and it has one driver node and three executor got added. Okay. And you can see the sizes of each executor with a 4 GB and 3 cores and 3 different instances and I have disabled the dynamic memory allocation and let me disable the AQ related properties since I am using the Spark 3 okay right so first we can see we can skip this one and we can see the remaining one so first we have a multiple CS, gzip csv files and we'll try to read those multiple csv files and we'll show you how it actually reads the data from the file system let me show you the files from the linux platform yes if you see i have four different csv files and this is zipped in gzip format Right. So now I'm going to read this file using the Spark and we'll see how fast it will read, how many cores it will take to process, how many partitions it will create to read. Okay. So let's go ahead and execute this command. Execute this code. Good. And trigger in a dummy action with a new operation. Okay. So let's go ahead and run this. Good. It has completed. Let's explore more details from spark ui yes if you see this particular job has taken four seconds and uh, let me explore more details from the job id if you see it has created the four different partitions let's go ahead and we'll see the tasks yes this is the task space and if you see it has created four different partitions and each partition size was 36.4 mb 36.4 mb okay so each executor has read the same data one executor has read two partitions so if you see it has created one partition for one file okay and totally it has taken four seconds let's note down this result so time taken to read is four seconds and number of cores will be used four cores okay so total we have a nine core with, our, with us right so out of nine it has used only four cores because it has only four files that means it has used one core for one file right so next we'll see the same employee data and now this time it is an unzipped format in the csv files and it is 10 gb worth of a data so first let me show you how the file look like in a linux platform you see it has 10.9 gb Okay, so let's go ahead and run the Spark code. Let's execute this code and trigger a dummy action. It has executed and we'll see 
more details from the Spark UI. This is the Spark UI and you see it has taken 25 seconds to process this data. Let's go ahead and explore the job ID details. Yes, this is the job ID and if you see it has created 88 partitions. Okay, so and total input size was 10.9 GB, right? So let's go ahead and get the more details on the task level. Yes, this is the stage and if you see these are the partitions that it has created and total 88 completed task and if you see each input size was 128.1 MB and max is also 128.1 MB right so each executor has shared 3.5 GB of the data and 3.8 and 3.6 right so if you see the task 88 each task has processed 128 MB of the data okay so why it has taken the 128 mb right so as per the default spark configuration it will consider 128 mb as one partition so it has divided the 10 gb into 88 partition according to the partition size so let's note down the result total time taken for process the full data it was around 25 seconds and number of cores used all nine cores at a time and it has created total 88 partitions right so that means at a time it has used a nine tasks to process until it reaches the 88 partitions right so now we can see parquet with a snappy compressed format okay so before executing it let me show you the data from the linux platform if you see it has 88 partitions and each partition size was 48.6 MB parquet file with snappy compression format. Okay, so we have total 89. If you remove one a success, it will be 88 partitions. Okay, so let's go ahead and execute the Spark code. Let me execute this code. Let me trigger a dummy action. It has completed. Now explore the spark ui to get more details this is the spark ui and you see it has taken 13 seconds to process the data right so let's explore the job id and get more details this is the job id and you see it has created the 44 tasks and total input size was 4.1 gb because this is already compressed with the snappy format so 10.9 gb will be compressed as 4.1 gb if you use parquet snappy compression you see these are all the partition sizes and medium partition was 97.3 MB and maximum was 97.3 MB, right? So it has equally shared the data between all the executors. And if you see 44 tasks, each task has processed 97.3 MB. That means approximately each task has combined with two partition from the file system, right? If you see this file system, size was 48.6 MB, so two partitions will be considered as one partition in the spark right so let's go ahead and note down the result total time taken approximately 13 seconds and number of cores will be used 44 partitions out of which nine cores will be used means all full cores will be utilized okay now we can read the same file in the ORC format and it is also compressed with snappy compression format. So let's go ahead and we'll run this data. So before run this, uh, before run this code, let me show you in the file system. Let me execute this command. You see, it has 44 partitions. Each partition size was 1 at 1.7 MB. Right, so this is ORC and Snappy compression. Right, snappy.org. So let's go ahead and run the Spark job. Let's execute this Spark code. Trigger and dummy action. Super, it has completed. Explore the Spark UI to get more details. Yes, you see, it has taken 11 seconds. Let's explore more details from the job ID. You see, it has created 44 tasks and total 4.3 GB of data. 
is the stage and you see how the partitions has distributed between the executors and each has divided approximately the same unfortunately it hasn't created the details for the 44 completed task but it has taken the medium partition size because if you see all partition size almost the same okay now note down the results it has taken 11 seconds to read the data and number of cores will be used 9 cores and total it has 44 partitions that it has created okay so if you observe all the result that what we have completed till now so this is the this is the file format that has given the best performance means ORC with snappy compression format parquet with snappy compression has taken 13 seconds and 44 tasks 44 partitions right so it has taken only 11 seconds to process the data okay now we'll see how many partitions or time will take to read the single ggzip csv file okay let me show you this file in the file system let me execute this command you see it has compressed as 4.3 gb okay so 10 gb csv file if you compress it will be 4.9 4.3 gb so let's go ahead and execute the spark code so let's execute this and trigger a dummy action it's taking long time so let's explore the spark ui yes you see it almost taken a minute but still it is in a running state right you see it has taken almost a minute but still it is in a running state so let me tell you more details so if we have only one csv file with any compression gzip compression format it will use only one core only one core to process all its data right so this is the reason it will take a long time to process a file so to understand this concept we have to understand few more concepts okay so let me show you in the spark ui how many cores it will use on the back end to execute this spark job okay it has taken 2.5 minute but still it is in running state let explore the job level details if you see here it just taken only one task right only one task that it has created that to no task is running at this moment it is still in preparation mode preparation mode means first it will prepare the data like how much data that it has to read and uh, all those stuff and then it will initiate the job right it is still in preparation mode that's why you can't see any of the job or task are running so even in my case it is doing in the same way it is showing only one task and no task is running it is doing almost for 30 minutes okay and then slowly with one task it is trying to load the data and it is memory was not sufficient it is spilling to the disk and finally it is failing with out of memory error right so this was the issue that i have faced even in the my project so now let me explain the approaches how we can solve this issue so before that let me note down the results it been three minutes three plus minutes but no output running right so number of cores will be used only one core and one partition right so it is trying to read all the 10 gb of the data into one partition with the one help of one core that's why it will take a lot of time to process the file okay so now to solve this problem we have some approaches multiple ways we can solve this problem the best approach what we have done in our our project is since it has 10.4 gp file what we have done by using the split command by using the split command and we have specified the you know number of size okay so that it will split the bigger file into multiple smaller files multiple smaller files and the problem will be converted to this step like when we have a multiple 
steps multiple smaller files so it will use all the available cores to read all its data so that is a one way that we can uh, solve this and if you have a feasibility you can convert this 10 mb data into some other format like orc or parquet so that you can take the benefits of better compression better compression so that it will your data size will reduce a lot and you can use the better parallelism more parallelism okay so these are the approaches to solve this problem so to understand why it is behaving in that way we need to understand few things is like something like splittable or non-splittable file format splittable versus non-splittable what does it mean so we have a two types of compression techniques are available one is like splittable like if you see the parquet and snappy or ORC snappy so this is splittable means whatever the file that you are writing it will write it as a multiple files so it will use the multiple cores to read all its data right so that's why it is a splittable format and csv dot ggip format is a non splittable format means it cannot split the file automatically when it is reading by the spark so you have to split the file manually and you have to give this file path to the spark to read the files parallelly with a smaller partition size okay so in this step you have to take care of some manual effort okay so let me tell you what are all the splittable and non splittable compression techniques are available in the big data these are all the non compressible format like gzip bzip snappy and the sequence file so these sequence files will be used in the hadoop platform uh, so on top of the uh, kind of a binary file so on top of it even if you apply the snappy it won't work and lz4 is a uh, another compression format if you use all these formats like you know bzip2 lz0 parquet orc and avro with the snappy so mostly we use the snappy compression so what is the recommended or you know conclusion step here is whenever you are trying to uh, compress the larger file better use the snappy compression format snappy plus parquet format okay so this will give you better performance in terms of reading in terms of writing with respect to, to spark okay so i hope you like this content you learned something new in this video so if you like this content please give a like and if you have any doubts or anything please comment or please give your feedback in the comment section and please do subscribe subscribe for more such interesting informative related videos thank you